the offensive boards. Marquette is not a great rebounding team, but they compensate for that by creating lots and lots of turnovers. So that's going to be the action points in this game. Mitchell controls the tip. Your officials, Mike Palau, Pat Driscoll, and Brent Hampton. Player movement, ball movement. That is the key for this Marquette offense. Woo! Wow. Look at Aro quickly down low already. <laughs> that guy's 6'10". He moved. That was an unbelievable move. You mentioned he played well last year. I don't think he missed a shot in this game last year. Tough man-to-man -man defense by Marquette. They'll use multiple defenses. They are ball-oriented. And there we go. Bediaco immediately scores at the other end. Both centers in the column already. Marquette quickly down the floor, in and out. And there is Mitchell flying in for the putback. Mitchell had a hamstring injury, out four games. He's one of those glue guys, best defender on the team. He's going to be on Richmond most of the time. Adewuso kicks it over, blocked. There's that perimeter defense from Marquette. Davis able to control 15 on the shot clock. Watch the hands of the Marquette players. They are going to be on the ball all the time. I got this. Pass deflected into the backcourt. Five to shoot. Officials say it was deflected. Three seconds left. Richmond contested three and fouled by Mitchell outside. What a break for the Pirates. Not a smart play by Mitchell. Richmond has only made three threes the entire season so far and to foul a guy out there is not a wise choice Lots of hustle guys get excited early in games and sometimes they make mistakes because they're trying to be so aggressive Shaka smart loves this kid Talks about the fact that when he was out it created a void in their team You don't hear coaches admit that very often Stevie Mitchell excellent defender Sends Kadari Richmond to the free throw line. First one's good. Richmond, the senior from Brooklyn, averaging just over 15 points per game, leads the Big East in steals, and really a matchup problem for teams on both ends of the floor. Shaka Smart says he plays like a free safety on defense. He's kind of a legend in Brooklyn uh, schoolyard play. Went to Syracuse and transferred. All five starters are transfers from the Division I schools for Seton Hall. Commonplace. This kid with the basketball, Kolick, is the best passer in America. Transferred in from George Mason. Big East player of the year last year. Jones off the pass in the paint. The pump fake up with the left. Pretty finish. Oh, man. The pump fake is right. Got the big man off the floor. They dribble penetrate. Cam Jones and Kolick get into the paint. Marquette as the team shoots 57% on twos. That's 28th best in the nation. But also fire up over 23 threes per game as well. And then we have a, an offensive foul against Bediaco on the handoff. Keys to the game brought to you by Fresh Pet. Bob, what do you got for us? Well, Tyler Kolick factor. Scoring and getting his teammates involved. Forced 13 plus turnovers, which is commonplace for them. Own the glass for the Seton Hall Pirates and could get Kadari going. Wusu played very, very well in their last game up at Providence. That's a tough place to play. That was a big win for them. Look at this passing. That's a thing of beauty, my friend. Joplin. That. And Shaka Smart is fired up on the sidelines. He talked about getting off to great starts. You talk about a week off and then a 12 p.m. tip. They've raced out to a 9-5 lead. I'm, I hate to say this, but uh, they pass a little bit better than you did when you were at Oregon. Oh. <laughs> hey, Gallic, listen, he passes better than a lot of people in the game now and back then as well. Here's a three, and that is dialed in. Adewusu finding the distance. Adewusu is a very important player. 2-2-1, two, two, zone press, maybe trap at the 10-second line. Look at the dribble penetration. Mitchell, the floater, that's off, gobbled up by Badiaco. In transition, broken up, and that's another turnover forced by the Golden Eagles. Yeah, they're going to see a lot of those against everybody they play against. Here's Kolek from outside, strings a triple. You're wondering why they're the number seven team in the nation? There you see it. They play with passion. They play so hard. And they're so positive in the things that they're doing out there. No doubt. They play with no doubt in their mind. No hesitation. 
Marquette two of three from outside. Davis the pump fake. And Russo driving, muscling his way to the cup for two. When you gamble on the perimeter, you're going to give stuff up. And How about that answer? Igadaro can run the floor at 6-11. Transition defense, Shaheen Holloway said that is the number one thing we have to keep in mind defensively is getting back. So Seton Hall will call timeout. Marquette. He's got to stay out of foul trouble. We haven't seen Davis make a play yet in this game, but he will. 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. Trap at the 10-second line, see if he can get a turnover, then sprint back. You mentioned that press. Here's a three fired from outside the arc. And that is Dawes giving Seton Hall a much-needed triple. They pulled it within one. Yes, Alamir, a transfer from Clemson. He's the best shooter on this team. Kolek maybe got away with a few steps. Kicks it out to Jones. 11 to shoot. Jones trying to cook against Davis. Spinning. Jones picks up the dribble, and he did take a trip. So Seton Hall getting the stop. Nice D by Davis there. The Louisville transfer. Penetrate and kick. That's beautiful. Easy shot. Nobody around him. When you gamble and go after the ball, you're going to create some opportunities for your opponent for easy shots. Whether they can make them or not is something else. Switch here. Bediaco's got a small guy on him. Mitchell is on Bediaco. Advantage, Seton Hall. They can't find him. Here's Richmond knifing through the lane. Adewusu, no good on the three. Joplin with the board. Did you see how Mitchell blocked out Bediaco on that one? You used to do that, so you, you should be here. We're going to teach you. Have you teach these guys a little bit about blocking out? <laughs> I usually needed help on the box out right there. <laughs> oh, excellent backdoor cut. A race, though, by Davis. Two great defensive plays in a row by Davis. Look at Shock on the, on the sideline, directing traffic. They're in zone right now. Davis gets to the paint, tries to dump it off to Bediaco, intercepted by Joplin. Kolick up ahead. Here's oh, Jones. Wow. The left hand goes window shopping. Oh, what a great pass. He gave it to him right at the right time. All Jones had to do was catch it and finish. Third turnover for Seton Hall. Marquette has turned that into eight points already in this game here, Bob. There you go. That's their nature. That's their culture. Eight to shoot. Cross-court pass. Richmond. The drive behind the back loses the rock. Kolick dies for it. Marquette brings it back down again. Ball Hawks. Cam Jones wants to penetrate. Joplin trying to play a little bully ball. Joplin turning the corner. High arcing hook. Oh, the finish. Iganaro all over that one. Benny Acco had to come and help. He should have stayed home. Force a layup over someone, but block your guy out. Every member of Marquette and Shaka Smart slapping the floor before that defensive possession. They've already generated four turnovers in less than seven minutes of action. Here's the double team. Davis left alone, thought about it, cutting, and a Russo blocked by Igadaro. Five to shoot. Davis. They've got to get it off. Richmond for three. Davis trying to fight for it. Joplin made a good tap right there to Kolick to get possession of that ball. Jones, rising fire, got it. Marquette starting to pull away a 7-0 run. When they are making threes, they can beat anybody. Purdue's the number one team in the nation. They lost by three to Purdue. Beat Kansas. Stolen in the open floor. Iganaro, put your trade tables up. The live ball turnovers, Bob, have just been critical for Seton Hall already. Right here. See, Bediaco comes over to try to block this shot. Nobody helps him. So Igadaro has an easy dunk. And right here, this is a 6'11 guy stealing it from a 6'2 guy on a pick out front. They make the commitment to steals. Lead the league in steals. 
That's why they have Igadaro as a late first, early second round pick in this year's NBA draft. Just the size, mobility, and can defend multiple positions, but Dawes stops the bleeding, a critical three. Full Seton Hall to within seven. Drive off the foot, that's going to bounce out of bounds and be Marquette ball. Sean Jones, 22, is in. Had his great game of his career against Creighton in their last one. That is he inbounding the ball right here. Shortest guy on the floor. He made three threes in that game against Creighton, and up until then, he had been pathetic from three-point range. Yeah, he'd been just four of 28 until he went three for five, two big threes down the stretch back-to-back, -back, and then went against Creighton. David Tubek into the game for Seton Hall. Igadaro, the crossover, big fella. Can't get the finish, though. Dawes already has two triples, trying to hunt another one, well defended by Ben Gold on the outside. Dawes, the drive with the left. Dawes sent to the floor. Able to draw the foul, though, so... Smart Dawes. play. He found Gold, who's 6'11", guarding him, so he said, I'm going right by this guy. There is help there, but the body... That ball was on the rim. And somebody touched it. It's the first foul on gold, second team foul against Marquette. Dawes is off to a good start here. Dawes with the seven points. Leads all Seton Hall scores. The transfer from Clemson. Yep. A couple years ago. He's had six play finishes in the Big East and threes made. He's 21st in the NCAA in active made three pointers. He has perfect form on his yeah. shot. Yes, he does. Watch him during. Follow him up just beautifully. Robotical. Gold can shoot from the perimeter. Gold and Igadaro in the game at the same time. Interesting. Igadaro off the bounce, kicks it over to Gold. Corner three rolls out. He can make those. Jaquan Sanders on the floor for Seton Hall. Grab that board. But Dawes trying to operate another deflection for Marquette. Leads to yet another turnover. Two deflections. Both guys got a hand on it. They chart deflections. That's not an official statistic, but they chart it. Jones trying to step through. Finds Jones up top. Can't get the connection, but there is Ross. Misses the bunny. Bediaco trying to get it. Ross rips it away, but he took a shot. And he is holding that left shoulder, grimacing in pain on the floor. And so we'll have a timeout on the floor here as Chase Ross in obvious discomfort. And Shaka Smart looking for a call. Marquette up five. Oh, Booking.com. I'm going to somewhere, anywhere. A beach house, a tree house. Honestly, I don't care. Find the perfect vacation rental for you. Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. Hey, deal lovers. Coming in. Here's something new. Having good taste shouldn't cost you a good deal. And in this hut, $7 gets you both. The all new $7 deal lovers menu at Pizza Hut. Because it's only a deal if you love it. I'm coming in hot. What was it like before Viaset Satellite Internet? Two words. Not fun. Log off, I've got homework. No, wait, still my turn. We couldn't share the internet. Time's up. Sharing's caring. But now with Viaset's new plans, we have plenty of internet for everyone. Except you, babe, being rude. More data. Mitchell was out with a hamstring, and Ross started all four of those games. So now they have to go a little bit deeper into their bench. Speaking of bench, Isaiah Coleman, the freshman on the court for Seton Hall, helped bring it down. And for Seton Hall, they've got to stop the live ball turnovers. They have seven turnovers. That's led to 12 points off of those for Marquette. Here comes the double. And a foul on the ball. Trey Norman in for Ross right now, who has played plenty in his career. That is he, substituting for Ross. Smaller, not as good a rebounder, but good on the D. Another errant pass, nearly another turnover. They're trying to get it inside to Elijah Hutchins Everett. Well, the good news for Seton Hall is they're three for six from three-point range, and they made five free throws out of five. So Shaheen has to be happy about that. And you've talked about uh, the, the turnovers. There's seven. 
That is not uncommon for anybody who plays against Marquette. So for Seton Hall, you've got to compensate for those turnovers with three-point shooting. Jones, a strong take down the floor. He'll head to the free throw line. And what a piece he was for Marquette. As we take a look at today's Intuit TurboTax player profile, those 15 points a career high against Creighton, especially the work he did in the second half. Yes, you're right. And, and he made several threes, and he got those 15 points in, 12, in 13 minutes. So he's an action player. And, I mean, he's going to create action. He's going the length of the floor with the dribble, and, and uh, he can get out of control sometimes, too. Uh, I, I wouldn't kid you. But in that game against Creighton, he was the most valuable player in the second half. When we were talking to Shaka Smart, we asked, starting the season off, 4 of 28 from 3, is that a difficult start? And Shaka Smart said, no, he does so many other things so well. He's really expanded his game. And Smart said, I don't think you'll find another guard that gets into the paint more than Jones does. Yeah. Although I think I could post him up. <laughs> the question is, would you be able to finish at that point? <laughs> no, help would be coming. <laughs> they do and like to double nuisance. the post, as they said. He's a nuisance on defense as well. Watch him here. I mean, this is a very interesting matchup. Kadari Richmond, 6'6", six, six, and he's they list him 5'10". He's actually about 5'8". A little weave action with 12 to shoot. Turning the corner, couldn't get it, was Sanders. Everett chases it down. Three to shoot. Everett spinning through bodies, fighting through the contact, and the circus shot is good. Hutchins Everett was big time in the win against Providence. Right here, he's on gold. So substitute against substitute here. And that is a very, very difficult shot. He averages 15 minutes a game, but against Providence, he played 20 because Betty Ako was in foul trouble. Very important guy for this team. Coaching staff said they love what he does defensively and a lot of the smaller things. They're just waiting for him to score a little bit more. Jones oh, loses a handful of Seton Hall defenders and then gets sent to the floor as they collapse on him, and that will draw another foul against the Pirates. He can motor, can he? Mm. In between all of the big guys. That's knocked down. Nice sportsmanship here. Help him up. He was on the floor, so no free throws. It's the first foul on Canary Richmond. He looks like one of those smaller running backs that just runs yeah, between the yeah, tackles, yeah. can't keep an eye on him, and yeah. puts a lot of pressure on the Seton Hall defense. Here's Gold from outside. A little too strong. Sanders rips it down. Kolick has been conspicuously absent from the offense here. Normally he dominates the ball, but when Jones is in the game, it takes away from him a little bit. Ripping it down is Richmond, a tough bucket down low. Seton Hall starting to find some rhythm. 9-2 run for the Pirates. Physical play, the steal in the open floor by Coleman. He is fouled by Kolick. Jones is trying to do too much. He's taking the ball away from Kolick. He's all over the floor, so you got to admire that. But, uh, you know, a bad pass there, a turnover at the other end. Forces Kolick to take a foul here. So Marquette, after starting this game 10 of 14, 0 for their last five. And as you said, they just haven't had that same rhythm offensively. Kolick does have three assists on 10 made field goals for this team, but usually he's even more involved than that. Well, he should be scoring more. He's the leading scorer on the team at 15. Now, they're balanced. You know, they have good balance on the team. Backdoor cut. Coleman, excellent find up top by Richmond. Pirates within one. Igadaro back on the floor for Marquette. Jones cut up on the baseline. Jones tries the three and some string music from outside. Now that's what you want. Your center, who's a great passer, gets into the game, immediately makes a good play. Zone defense right now. Shaka saw what I saw, and Sean Jones is on the bench right now. Another deflection for Marquette as they sit back in this zone. Richmond trying to navigate it. The spin dribble, one-two step, gets to the cup, picks up his miss, puts it right back in. 
Mitchell thought about it, knocked out of bounds by Sanders. When Richmond drove to the basket and missed his shot, and here is he is passing, leads the team in assists as well. And right here, Jones the three, and that was a pass from Iguodala. Kolek turns the corner, but traveled before he dribbled. So turnover number four for Marquette. And now the Golden Eagles are the ones having some issues trying to grip the basketball. Two-point lead for Marquette. Their largest lead was 10. They led 23-13 since then. Seton Hall started to figure things out. Down low, up and under. Hutchins Everett with the finish. Richmond's putting on a show. Subtly. Mitchell nearly loses it in the corner. Jones, he's got 10 already. Thought about it. Gets it to Igadaro. Back to Jones. He gets into the paint. Float game, no good. Here comes Davis. The Hall can take the lead here. Davis with the left hand. Tough shot, no good. Back and forth. Both teams want to push it. Jones draws two. Igadara up top. He'll put it on the floor, trying to fight through some contact. And that's going to be a foul against Seton Hall on the drive. <laughs> Got an exciting one here. You're watching college basketball on CBS Sports Network, presented by Fresh Pets. What's the remedy in this situation if you are Marquette to get your defensive group back? Well, they, they, just minutes, you know. I mean, they will. The key thing right now in the game is Richmond has two fouls. Shaheen took took Richmond out. He's out of the game right now. And this is unfamiliar territory for Seton Hall. Two fouls on him. Lots of coaches keep guys out with two fouls the entire uh, half. I don't know if your dad, the great Ernie Kent, did that when he was at Oregon and Washington State. He would just keep me out regardless. <laughs> he kept you out. <laughs> <laughs> but it is that chess match, and you play a little bit of risky basketball. Coleman, fortunately, has stepped in and given some nice minutes for the Hall here with 10 to shoot. Dawes had two threes earlier, been a little quiet since then. Shot clock winding down. He might have to rise up here. Trying to go to work against Iganaro. Oh, goes off the glass. Excellent finish. Seton Hall takes the lead. I think this is the best he's played all year. Kolick tries to keep it alive. That's it out of bounds. And all of a sudden, Seton Hall has hustled up Marquette. The grittiness is showing it. And the fans love it. Five starters, all from other colleges. One of the oldest teams in college basketball playing together right now. Richmond out. What will they do on offense? Foul on the play. Let's send it down to Kiana for an update here. Kiana? Hey, guys. We saw just a few moments ago Chase Ross on the on the floor at the court currently holding his shoulder. Well, he has officially been ruled out with that shoulder injury, guys, so he will not return for this game. Yeah, wow. thank you, Kiana. Tough loss for Marquette and some of that defensive depth that they try to flex. He's their sixth man. Seton Hall with the two-point lead trailed by as many as ten. Here's Davis. He's been rather quiet. That's blocked at the summit. It's going to remain Seton Hall ball with six to shoot. A lot of traffic there. And Joplin swats it out of bounds. Watch the switch he just said. Three guys across the front. They're going to screen for one another. And there it is. Open three in the corner. A lot of contact at the end of that one. And Iwusu can't get it. Jones hustling down the floor. Joplin left wide open off the mark Joplin gets his own miss in the finish with the left <laughs> You don't often see a guy shoot a three and chase down his own rebound. That was a good play by Joplin With Kolick not playing as part of the offense as he normally does and Richmond out for Seton Hall Two of the star players not playing as big roles certainly right now. That's a moving screen Another turnover, the foul on Hutchins Everett. Let's watch this three. Bounces off badly, and he his man did not block him out at all. Coach Smart likes it. Yeah. 
Marquette just two for their last ten. Igadaro kicks it out. Oh, yeah. Jones, he has got all day. Can't finish, though. And another rebound for the Hall. They're off and running. Two on one advantage. Davis to Dawes. Dawes the finish. Dawes now up to 12 points, a game high. Joplin, and you've got the hall monitor. Coleman with the block. Energy in the building for Seton Hall. Davis, clean look up top, finds the bottom, and Seton Hall has stretched the lead to five. Thirty-five, thirty, home team. On the court now that he's been a father this year and has helped him really elevate his game. Big time three for Seton Hall. They're shooting 54% from the field. After trailing by 10, it's a 22 to 5 run for them. Golick trying to get into the paint, forces that one up, batted around, loose rock. Trying to save it, Seton Hall recovers. Adewusu in transition, another look from the corner. Would have brought the house down here, Dawes. Slow things up with 16 to shoot. Dawes takes over the point when Richmond is out. Step back three, Dawes! Oh, perfect on the afternoon. 15 points. How about the shooting performance we're seeing from Alamir Dawes so far this afternoon? Three of three from beyond the arc. Off the dribble here, the pull up on the front change of direction. Nothing but bottom. He is feeling it. At 12 points against Providence, career high is 25. Well on track for that with 15. Some guys play better at noon. It's interesting because some people are morning people. The three is short. Marquette cannot find a shot from outside. Here's Jones trying to muscle for the board. Igadaro there to clean things up. A much-needed bucket to help the Golden Eagles get back into this one. Because of this run, Shaheen Holloway has kept Richmond on the bench, which is a big, big deal so that he can be rested and well, ready to go in the second half. Jones on Dawes. Here's Davis, eight to shoot. They try to go baseline, double team comes. Davis able to hang on to the rock. Skip pass, Dawes. One to shoot over Igadaro. Would have been unbelievable if he hit that one. I tell you what, they would have exploded behind us here, Bob. <laughs> Just over three minutes left in this first half. Seton Hall, they've won their last two games in conference over ranked opponents. Number five, UConn, number 23, Providence. Marquette needs a little patience. Intercepted once again, another turnover forced as Coleman. That was an ill-advised one by Kolek. Shaheen turnovers. just put his two hands down, talking about patience. They ran clock a lot against, in, in the second half, a lot against Providence in that big win. And a turnover by Seton Hall. They woosu, but steals it right back, steps through, challenge at the cup, draws the foul, so the thievery in the backcourt. We've got action in Newark. Shaheen Holloway is feeling good. 38-32, the all. There's no Belichickery here. When Sunday football isn't enough. Dislike that take. Great take. That other pregame show will put you over the tops. I'm all in. Let's go viral here. Every Sunday, all the insight you need on CBS Sports Network. At Jersey Mike's, they slice your sub right in front of you. A good story, and I told Coach about that. His response, you're making me feel old. <laughs> Wusu just made an unbelievable play. The ball was stolen by the smallest guy on the floor, and he got low and stole it back from Sean Jones to get to the free throw line. He's played well against Marquette, as you can see there. Of course, he's from St. John's, so he played Marquette when he was at St. John's as well. 
and really Seton Hall has looked like a completely different team since they trailed 23 13 backdoor pass excellent find as Mitchell gets the land well a couple of things happened during that stretch you know the crowd came into it which gives guys a lot of energy and Dawes just kept making shots at the time mistakes were being made by Marquette's defense Mitchell breaks it up again goes crashing into the crowd on the baseline and a difficult finish back-to-back -back buckets and Marquette trails by four what a great play by Mitchell there was a void when he missed four games Shaka said oh he's back and his defense is preeminent with this team goal down the perimeter he's got two fouls a collision as Jones is sent to the floor Dawes ran right into him He's going to be helped up to the floor by his teammates. Looks like he's going to shake it off. I think that's going to be Marquette basketball. Drive right here. Ooh. Mm. He was in position, took the charge, and Amir Dawes was not going up for a shot. Plus, Jones was outside the restricted arc, so that's going to be Marquette ball on the charge. Offensive foul on Dawes, and you saw him lose his footing and almost run into Jones low, and that's why he was grabbing his abdomen. So Marquette has not taken advantage of the fact that Richmond is out of the game. Jones the drive into the paint, chopped at by Ade Wusu. Coming up on the AT&T at the half, Adam Zucker, Jay Wright, and Seth Davis will get you caught up with all of the action in college basketball. Plus, we'll have the first half stats and highlights. This is all coming up on AT&T at the half. 14 to shoot. Igadaro's been a terrific facilitator so far in the first half for Marquette. Back Jumps. cuts are available. Five to shoot. Jones one-on-one -on -one against Doss. Jones cooking. Step back three. Oh, nothing but twine. He doesn't know that he shoots 21% from three-point range. He just keeps shooting anyway. It's good to have guys like that. They need him in this game. He can get some instant offense going. 7-0 run for Marquette. Seton Hall trying to get into the locker room at halftime with the lead. A lot of contact, no whistle. The step through Sanders, the floater from the baseline. High degree of difficulty. Wow. That was a heck of a shot for a guy who does not play that much. First bucket of the game for Sanders. 45 seconds left here in the first half. Jones trying to go up with the left. No good. Bounces off. It is getting physical. There have been lots of bumps on guys driving. Mitchell tried to shoot the gap. And that's going to be a foul on Adewusu trying to save the play. Adewusu on that play. The ball gets loose. And right here, of course, this is terrific. Pull up three. Mr. Energy, Sean Jones. Shaheen was not happy with that call. For Marquette, the law firm of Jones and Jones have combined for 15 <laughs> points on 5 of 13 shooting. They've really spearheaded both their offense and defense. Well, Kolick is out of the game, and, and Sean Jones is in for him. And he's done a good job intermittently. Kolick, last year, Big East Player of the Year, most valuable player in the league. They won the regular season and the conference tournament. And this young man, Mitchell, is the defensive force on this team, and he's helped in the last couple of minutes. Heads to the line for the one and one. Can't get the first, so ended up being a pretty smart foul by Adewusu. Two-second differential between shot and game clock. The Hall can hold for potentially the last shot. Dawes is pestered at midcourt. Double team comes. Adewusu charging through, shoulder to shoulder. Davis trying to rip it away. And we're going to have a jump ball. That'll be possession to Seton Hall with 13.2. And now they can officially hold for the final shot. Joplin checks in for Marquette. We have seen some very good moving without the ball by both teams. And you need that when, when teams pressure you. You have to have back cuts. Even if you're not getting a layup every single time, it, it, it softens up the D a little bit. Lowry also checks in for Ben Gold, prevents him from getting a third foul potentially. It's going to be Davis up top, 10 seconds left. Dawes is the man of the hour. Dawes, three to go. Dawes with two defenders all over him, no good. 
And Seton Hall will hang on for a three-point lead at half. But, Bob, we talked about it. It was Chaka Smart. He said he wants to see more from his defense in this one. He said not so much of those, those single efforts, more of that triple effort when looking at this unit. Also, he said getting Tyler Kolek more involved. He's a great player, but he wants to see more. He's going to get the ball more in his hands in the second half, guys. Thank you, Kiana. Chaka Smart said his team was overhelping in the first half. That led to some open looks for Seton Hall. Kolek has to do something with it. Nearly turned over. Seven to shoot for Jones. Jones in traffic. Kolek, cleanest look he's had all day off the rim. Nice tip back by Iguodaro. Corner three, knocked down. Stevie Mitchell comes up big once again. <laughs> look at the smile. <laughs> he's not normally they rely on for three-point shooting, and he knocks that one in. Ties it up at 42 apiece. Another offensive rebound for Marquette. Igadaro nearly picks it at the three-point line. Richmond, the drive. Difficult finish. Igadaro poked it away, but he didn't stay with it. Kolick on the baseline, and that'll be kicked out of bounds. Impressive kick by Richmond, but it'll be Marquette ball. Stevie Mitchell from the corner. He almost stepped out of bounds, but uh, nothing but twine there. Beautiful follow through. Mitchell nine points on four of five shooting. Jones curling, catching, connecting nearly as it bounces off. Jones had ten points in the first half. Iguodaro also had ten points. Bediaco, no good. Iguodaro with the board. Guys in the white uniforms are feeling very, very confident right now. Kolek draws two. Joplin. Tricky shot on the baseline. Quickly claimed, getting the start in the second half. David Tubek, the freshman. Well, Richmond in charge of the ball now. He's got great change of pace, and he's very, very strong. Dawes in the corner. Joplin with the closeout. Seven to shoot. Dawes, another step back triple sent to the deck, though, as Joplin fouls him on the follow through. Front change of direction. That's well, what when, when, when Dawes shoots and barely hits the rim, you know it's a foul. I mean, he grabs his wrist right there, clearly. And the ball, watch the ball spin. It's not his normal spin. It, it went up uh, like a screwball. And if your shock is smart, I imagine that's frustrating. You get them down to the shot clock winding down. And this is the second time we've seen it happen this game. They foul a three-point shooter on a desperation shot. You don't want that, that's for sure. But in the heat of the moment, those things happen. Seton Hall, 8 of 9 from the free throw line as a team. Marquette shot just three free throws in the first half as Dawes connects on the first two. He's now up to 17. Well, that stat is something that wins games for sure. You know, at the free throw line, obviously, making those, especially at the end game situation. Just saw a moment there between Holloway and Smart. Changing a couple of smiles and two young competitive coaches that took programs to unprecedented heights before they got to where they're eventually at here. Here's Jones, a three, contested, rebound to Richmond. Richmond dumps it off. Bediaco can't finish. Kolek down the floor. Joplin trying to one-two step, kisses it off the glass for the two-point conversion. It'll be interesting to see how much of what we're seeing right now we see. Because Seton Hall is a team that's not deep, we know. And we know that they have had success going deep into the shot clock when they have a lead. They did that against Providence, and they won the game. In that same game against Providence, the bench didn't even score a point. Dawes, here's the three. Can't leave them open, Bob. You can't leave them open. Dawes, 21 points on the afternoon. Stolen. Adewusu. Adewusu goes right by everybody. Almost gets the and one. But free throws coming. The reward for the hustle. Dawes, the pull-up. 
he releases that so quickly and so high arcing. And Ade Wusu right here, length of the floor, 94 feet. He went all the way. He has been really, really good against Marquette in his career. Second consecutive foul against Joplin, his second personal. Prior to that bucket, Dawes, his fourth made three of the day, matches a season high. And when you're getting this type of output, instead of Richmond, instead of Davis leading the way, that's when Seton Hall becomes very difficult to defeat. No doubt about it. Ben Gold will check back in. And Seton Hall at this moment, their largest lead of the game. And their ability to attack and transition, that's really been the difference since the beginning of this game as well, too. Day Wusu, 66% from the free throw line. Beats the map, hits them both. Seton Hall now with an eight point advantage. The Hall have knocked off two ranked opponents in Big East play. Number five, UConn. Number 23, Providence. Trying to add number seven, Marquette. Kolick spinning, whirling, can't get the angle. And another rebound by Betty Ako. A lot of bumping going on on people driving to the basketball. It's it, They're letting it go. The officials are letting it go. So you adjust to that. Richmond, a rare three in and out. Foul on Betty Ako over the back. A little over exuberant right there. Second foul on Betty Ako, but how about the guard comparison here? Well, Richmond. obviously Richmond's doing much better job. Kolick is invisible compared to his normal contributions. And I think you got to credit Seton Hall's defense. They are keenly aware of where he is at at all times, and they switch on him big time. Gold, he can shoot that, puts it on the floor, kicks it back out. Jones has the mismatch, trying to work against Betty Ako. Oh, oh, no, sir. Betty Ako beats it against the glass. They Wusu, Richmond. They're trying to back, back it down. In. Gets into the paint, up and over Mitchell. The finesse and the largest lead continues to grow for Seton Hall. They now have a 10-point advantage as the fans here at the Rock rise to their feet. Action for the Hall. Richmond overpowering. 10-point lead. Johnson, they lose at Providence big. And, uh, you know, they have not proven so far this year that they're going to be dynamic on the road. Igadaro right there, point blank, can't get it, kisses it off the front of the rim. Marquette started this game 10 of 14, since then 8 for 31. <laughs> Richmond patrolling the paint, high arcing shot, that's off target. Offensively for Marquette, what has to change because it just feels like they're having to work so hard for everything. Well, getting it to him in the lane would probably be a good idea. Uh, you know, I mean, they're they are who they are. They move the ball, they pass it. They're a beautiful offensive team in terms of ball movement, but you got to make shots at, at, at some point. You got to credit Seton Hall's defense. I mean, they are just sticking and they're gritty and they're not letting guys go where they want to go. And defensively at this end, too much gambling on Dawes. With Dawes, you just got to stay home. The guy's having a great game. You can't, you, you can't help. You can't go off him and, and, you know, help on penetration. We got two great coaches in this one. Shaka Smart and Shaheen Holloway. How about that little discussion? Jersey Mike's freshly slices you sub right in front of you. It has a rhythm. This is a rhythm of the spice. The spice. Oh, yeah. The Sliced the right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. Storied career, you know, uh, both at Clemson was outstanding and, and outstanding here, and he is a shooter that they need. Other than him, they're not great at three-point shooting. Richmond, a flurry of fakes, no good, attacking the offensive glass. Ball never hit the rim, though, so a shot clock violation. Marquette getting the stop. I think the physicality of Satan Hall is bothering Marquette. 
especially on the offensive glass, in the paint, bumping in the lane, bumping on cutters. And Shaka Smart said that. He said, you are not going to get that first call on the first contact you're going to see, whether it's on ball or off ball. Here's gold. Oh, good as gold and a much-needed <laughs> bucket for Marquette. New Zealand. That's a long way from uh, Marquette. He's the Canberra Australia NBA Global Academy's first D1 player and slightly different climate as well, too, I would imagine. <laughs> Southern Hemisphere. Ten to shoot. Richmond once again wants Back to clear in. things out. Working against Mitchell. Poked away. Stolen by Marquette. Igadaro. Oh, the Euro step nearly gets the finish, but fouled. And again, Marquette attacking in transition. Gold makes a nice move here. Notice how he protects the basketball when he got by his man. That is good stuff right there by the big guy. And right here, the poke away by Mitchell leads to this breakaway. Mitchell has done that several times as as Richmond backs him in. He's able to poke the basketball away. His defense very, very good. Tomorrow morning at 8 Eastern, get ready for the final week of NFL regular season play as our gridiron crew brings you previews and predictions on that other pregame show here on CBS Sports Network. Bob, I don't think I ever asked you. You got an NFL team, my friend? Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, the hometown, right? Absolutely. Well, Trevor Lawrence. I mean, Did you got anything you can send him to make that shoulder feel better? Well, he played golf with me a couple of weeks ago. Really? But, um, no, he played right behind oh. me. Um, <laughs> great guy. Hopefully, he's going to play. Big game for the Jaguars coming up here, but we have got a foul on the floor That's again. That's Jones. That's Jones. He's holding. So on the other end, Kadari Richmond picked up his third on that last play. Jones picking up his second. So some of the key players inching towards foul trouble for both Marquette and Seton Hall. You only have to make a decision in the second half when a guy gets to four. Jones trying to lock up Dawes. Dawes the drive. Draws two. Tough angle. Bediaco blocked. Marquette swarming on the defensive end. And they force the stop. So Marquette starting to tighten the clamps defensively, especially in the paint. Nearly stolen. Hitting our monitor. I got it. And you've got the loose ball, coach. <laughs> One more look, and Nicodaro right there to clean it up. And I'll tell you what, with those reflexes, Bob, wouldn't surprise me if you're a single-digit handicap. Nicodaro can't get it, bothered at the summit. Davis, the excellent defense. Dawes pushing it on the other end. Coleman down low, muscles one in. So Coleman giving Seton Hall some excellent minutes. The freshman Igadaro drawing another foul. Bediaco puts his hand up trying to claim it. Well, Igadaro obviously is the best offensive player in this game for Marquette. And his touches have not come by him posting up. I mean, it's more movement, sliding across the lane, you know, filling the lane, those kind of plays. They'd be wise to get him the ball a little bit more in the last 12 minutes. Igadaro, 13 points, 8 rebounds. Ooh, that Rolls hit a in lot the first of iron. One, yes. A lot of iron. It's a 6 point lead for Seton Hall. Cam Davis coming back in the game, and uh, he can create. Mitchell goes out. Cam, a little bit better offensive player than Mitchell. Mitchell better defensively. So we're going to see some of that kind of action going down the stretch here. That one looked better. Two big free throws for Igadaro. A job little check in replacing him, so the damage was done. He drew a couple of fouls, got to the free throw line, and Marquette now made it a two possession game with 12.44 left. Full court pressure. Haven't seen a lot of this in this game. No, we haven't. So it feels like Marquette has really shut down a lot of things near the rim for Seton Hall. What are the Pirates thinking here? Coleman waiting for a screen, picks up the dribble, eight to shoot. Adewusu 
Goes right by Kolick. Challenge blocked again. Marquette. The rim protection as Joplin sends it back to the floor. Shades of the defense we saw from Marquette when they built that 23-13 lead. Jones dishes it off. Joplin corner. Look, it's good. Marquette pulls within two. They took their time offensively. Nobody over dribbled. They got a clean look. Sometimes when you shoot too fast, you don't let the defense make a mistake. A 10-2 Marquette run. The strong heads on the screen. Davis faced by Jones. Seven to shoot. Coleman, the freshman. Bediaco, shot clock winding down, faces the double team, and they're not going to get it off in time. And so clock mismanage it by Seton Hall, leads with a turnover. Shaka Smart and Marquette, they love it. Beautiful D. Beautiful O. 56-54. Booking.com. Somewhere, anywhere, I just want to lie motionless in a chair. Booking.com, booking. Yeah. Hey, deal lovers, in. here's something new. Having good taste shouldn't cost you a good deal. And in this hut, $7 gets you both. The all-new $7 deal lovers menu at Pizza Hut. Because it's only a deal if you love it. I'm coming in hot. It's our phone bill. We pay for things that we don't need. That's a bit dramatic. We must tighten our belts. A better plan to save is Verizon. That's right. Plans start at $25 per line, guaranteed for three years. Only on Verizon. After Advil. Let's dive in. But what about your back? It's fine! Before Advil. Advil dual action fights pain two ways. Advil targets pain at the source. Acetaminophen blocks pain signals. Advil dual action. Where'd you want to serve? Oh, I didn't serve. But if your spouse, parent, or grandparent served in the military, you can join USAA. Yeah, my grandpa did. So I'm already in. But I was talking about your serve. Oh. USAA for the military community. All right, Sheila. Are you throwing a dress like a dad party, a birthday brunch, or a vow renewal for your dog? Yes. yes. Whoa, whoa. The right drinks to live it for any party. Drizzly. Watching college basketball on CBS Sports Network presented by Fresh Pet. And how about the defense of Marquette here? Well, goal number 12 right here is going to come down on the double team. And when he does, people are going to slide in here to prevent the outlet pass. Gold comes as soon as he puts the ball on the floor. Kolick gets in between them. And as a result, they get the turnover. And Coach Smart loves that action. Double team the post, jump in the passing lane, force a turnover. What this game is, is a team that creates a lot of turnovers, Marquette, against a team that doesn't create a lot of turnovers, but is very physical in the half court and very good on the boards. And it's kind of been even. Those two compensating styles of play are leading to a very, very competitive game. Now, the question becomes, in the end game situation, usually some player is going to make a play, right? And, and, and a play that might be unusual. Mm. Dawes has been the, unlike, been the unlikely star for Seton Hall in this one because when they get, move the ball and he's open, he's making shots. Gold, the three, off the back heel, rebounds to Dawes. What a given Marquette the lead. They trailed 54-44. Since then, they've forced Seton Hall to shoot one for six. You talk about a green light with gold, right? Guy is a backup center, and he takes a three from like 30 feet. 
Richmond, the drive and the horsepower to get to the cup. Joplin, no hesitation. Gold keeps it alive. Cam Davis, number one, has been absent from the action. And with Colet also absent. That's unusual. Kolick with eight to shoot, gets into the paint, flips the pass. Jones open, look. Coleman secures the board. Well, you got the two best players, scorers, and Kolick and Jones involved there, and they come up with nothing. Dribble weave up top to set things up for Seton Hall. It's Richmond defended by Jones. Jones, how about the sheer tenacity he's shown? Gets whistled for the foul. And for Jones, that'll be his third foul. He is blowing by people, and when he gets close to the rim, he finishes. No need for dunks. Just get the ball in the basket. And then, of course, he draws the foul on Sean Jones right there. Stevie Mitchell and Igadaro checking back in for Marquette. Richmond, a little hesitation dribble, trying to back things down. Double teamed, able to regain possession. And here's a whistle. This will be fascinating because don't forget, Jones has three. That'll be number four on Jones. And that is huge trouble for Marquette. The crowd knows it too. So Trey Norman will step in. And replace Sean Jones, but Sean Jones has been the point man on any ball handler defensively. He's also done a little bit more to create offense. Davis pops free down low, pump fake, and is pushed immediately by Norman. So the fouls starting to pile up for Marquette. Good execution of the end line out of bounds play by the uh, Pirates. Notice Richmond inbounds the ball. He's the best passer on this team. That was a very difficult pass. It went right through the hands of the guy who was guarding Richmond. And he has this casual look about him when, he's, when he walks around. But, man, never gets rattled. Dawes will bring it out. Richmond. Looking to post up Mitchell. He's gone to work against him a couple of times and another bucket for Richmond. He's Richmond. unguardable by a guy that size when he's close to the basket. He's got 15. Seton Hall up by six, under 10 minutes left. Norman spinning. Norman, wild shot. Pop free, running down the floor is Dawes. Dawes, open runway, gets it to go. Dawes with 23, lead is eight. Kolick, no, gets his miss. Kolick again draws the foul. Amir Dawes ahead of the pack. And this was a bad-looking shot from Norman, who just got in the game, a floater with his left hand. And Amir Dawes runs it out. Kolick, you can see the numbers. That's glaring. Averages 15, only has four today. Adi Wooster checking back in, but Dawes... Putting in an unbelievable performance so far. 7 for 10, 23 points. He'll go to the bench for a rest. Nine minutes to go. That's a long time. He Obviously. said, I got zero. So we know that Kolick is going to be on a day we suit. And there it is. Seton Hall, three for their last three. How about those free throw shooting? It's been the difference, 12 of 13. Richmond again against Mitchell. This has been the mismatch, exposes it again. Jones back in the game, splashes a three. Shaka Smart rolling the dice, putting him out there with four fouls. Yeah, long time to go, but uh, that's a decision. 
when you're behind, you got to stay with it. And Russo turns it over. Mitchell scoops it up. But no fast break. Notice it? No fast break. They get back quickly, and they get into their half-court D physical bump people. Jones on the baseline. Hesitation dribble up and under. Draws the foul, so the patience paid off down low. Kadari Richmond is a tough guy to guard, and right here, he looks one way, spins the opposite way, and right in between two people gets it up on the glass. And right here, the answer by Sean Jones. That was nothing but bottom there. That's what he did against Creighton in the second half. He made them from the other wing. It's the third foul against Isaiah Coleman, but since that 4 of 28 start, from three to start the season for Sean Jones. He's five for his last seven. That two works. For, two for two this afternoon. Joplin back in for Cam Jones. Sean Jones sitting on eight points. Misses the second. So still a two possession lead for Seton Hall. And here comes some full court pressure. One, two, one, one variety. You try to trap it. If you're right, the offense, you get the ball to the middle and you reverse it. And they are back in a matchup 1 2 2 zone right here. Notice Richmond at the free throw line. He'll be a passer and scorer from that position. Now they go man. Richmond eyeing the shot clock, trying to change speeds, goes up against Igudal, and that is going to be a shot clock violation. So another stop for Marquette with 7.39 left. The Golden Eagles trying to claw back into this one. On the next NFL Monday QB, with multiple win and end games on the line, our crew recaps who's in and who's out of Super Wild Card Weekend. Go under center on the only NFL show all about quarterbacks. Monday on CBS Sports Network. It's our phone bill. We pay for things that we don't need. That's a bit dramatic. We must tighten our belts. A better plan to save is Verizon. That's right. Plans start at $25 per line, guaranteed for three years, only on Verizon. What's my safe flight story? I'm a photographer, and when I'm driving, I see inspiration right through my glass. So when my windshield cracked, it had to be fixed right. I scheduled with Safe Flight Auto Glass. Their experts replaced my windshield and recalibrated my car's advanced safety system. Safe Flight is the one I trust. They focus on safety, so I can focus on this view. Safe Flight Repair, Safe Flight Replace. My name is Ashley Cortez, and I'm the founder of the Stay Beautiful Foundation. When I started in 2016, I would go to the post office and literally fill out each person's name on a label. And now at ShipStation, we are shipping 500 beauty boxes a month. It takes less than five minutes for me to get all of my labels and get beauty in the hands of women who are battling cancer so much quicker. ShipStation, the number one choice of online sellers. Go to ShipStation.com slash TV and get two months free. Your best defense against erosion and cavities is strong enamel. Nothing beats it. New Pro Enamel Active Shield actively shields the enamel to defend against erosion and cavities. I think that this product is a game changer for my patients. It really works. Let's get down to business. Well, let's revisit the keys to the game brought to you by Fresh Bet here, Bob. Well, the Tyler Kolick factor has not been in evidence at all. Uh, way below his norm with only five points. Force 13 turnovers, check. No problem. They've done it. On the offensive board, Seton Hall has done that. And get their best player going, they have done that. And, of course, the... Uh, the guy in all of this has been Alamir Dawes, and uh, he has been spectacular. Alamir Dawes shoots 31% from three-point range on the year, and in this game, you would think that he was a leading three-point shooter in the nation because they have been right on perfect rotation. I mean, he is making shots with guys contesting him. He's making shots with guys off the dribble. Very few standstill shots for him in this game. 
and his teammates know it, so they've been feeding him whenever he's open. I mean, he gets he gets the ball. 23 points, four of five from downtown. Just two points shy of his career high. And so with 7.39 left here, you're Seton Hall. You're about to get the ball here. Make that Marquette possession. Seton Hall defensively. What do you have to try and do to continue to make life difficult for Marquette? Marquette just 6 of 20, 30% here in the second half. Yeah, just keep doing it. They've been switching everything. I mean, they're up on shooters. They're guarding people physically. And uh, they're switching when necessary. Staying between the ball, between the man and the basket. All basic stuff. Kolek dumps it off. Igadaro fouled. Hutchins ever thought he tied it up, but that is going to send Igadaro to the free throw line yet again. When you're when you're from behind, that looks like it's a clean block with his hand on the ball from behind, but his body is pushing him from behind. We couldn't see it from our angle. Second foul on Hutchins Everett. Igadaro sticks the first free throw, the senior from Chandler, Arizona. And one thing you notice when you go up and down this roster for Marquette, you don't see nearly the amount of transfers that you see in a lot of programs. There is loyalty and something that Shaka Smart is building with this culture at Marquette. Everybody's doing it a different way, and uh, they're all fine. However you have to do it, you do it with uh, acquiring talent. Here comes that trap once again. Davis in the middle. He's been very quiet for Seton Hall, by the way. Trey Davis just three points. Well, the more Amir Dawes does, the, the less that Davis is and, and guys like him are going to do. Uh, what a pass. Davis down low, tries to feather it to Hudson's Everett, but a little too strong. And Seton Hall at home this season against top ten teams over the last three seasons. Saw the victory against UConn earlier in the season. Marquette. Currently with the lead, and so they've been successful somewhat over top 10 teams here at home. Kolek still one for five with just five points. I wouldn't count him out, even though he's not playing a very good game by his standards or any standard, really. He is a capable of making plays when it counts. Joplin contested triple. Oh, a huge one, and Marquette ties it up. 8-0 run for Marquette. Slapping the floor, baby. Richmond. 3-2 zone. Get it to the high post. Richmond directing traffic here. Davis no good from the corner. Sanders skies for a big rebound. Davis down low, up and under the lay-in. I like what Shaka Smart does going to zone because they were just isolating Richmond. They couldn't guard him man to man. They got Aro tangled up with a Day Wusu, and that's going to be Marquette Ball. Seton Hall thought they snatched another one. That's a lot of contact. Mm. We've got a few fans that can see our monitor behind us that don't necessarily agree with the call on the floor right there. Kolek dumps it off. Igadaro feathers one in. Kolek made a great pass there. And on the last possession, notice how Richmond is taking the ball out front against the zone. I'd rather see him out there as a facilitator than against man-to-man. -man. Right now they're switching back to man-to-man. -to -man. When he gets in the lane, you can forget about it. Hutchins Everett trying to carve out some real estate down low. Oh, behind the back, Richmond nearly completed the razzle-dazzle, but his assistant, Hutchins Everett, couldn't complete the trick. This is beautiful to watch. Just a little left-handed shovel pass. Little low for a big man to catch. Dished it up, but wasn't ready to eat. Tied up at 66. Marquette can take the lead. They trail by as many as 10 in this second half. Jones, jump stop, Joplin from the corner. I'll tell you, the Seton Hall players give that ball to Richmond when they are in doubt at all. All right, Stevie Mitchell is on Richmond. 
He can guard him, but when he gets there, you can forget it. Richmond dumps it off, finishes through the contact. Hutchins Everett won't be denied. Seton Hall two-point lead. Kolek down low, Joplin kicks it back out. Fans are irate right now. Hutchins Everett the steal. Just the second turnover of this half for Marquette. Comes at a costly time. Four minutes and change remaining. Seton Hall looking for their third win over a ranked Big East opponent this year. Richmond fouled on the handle. He can change direction like nobody's business. A potential upset in the making. Hutchins, Everett, and Seton Hall trying to fight for another one here at home. This winter, Jeep 4 by e Richmond at the line, 1-1, one and one, hits the first. Seton Hall, 13 of 14 from the free throw line this afternoon. Yeah. You know, it's a weird statistical game because they're almost perfect at the foul line, and yet they have 19 turnovers, and they're in the game against the number seven team in the country. Richmond with 12 second half points. The lead is now four for Seton Hall. Tyler Cole is still zone. Ice cold. Zone. Jones over to Joplin. Joplin the three. Off target. Ade Wuzu with the rebound. Nice call by Shaheen Holloway. They were man all the time. They go to his zone. Throws Marquette's rhythm off. Richmond double ball screens. Gets another one from Bediaco. Draws two defenders. Davis deflected. Marquette fighting for it. Seton Hall on the floor. It's a scrum. Davis rolling everywhere. Officials finally blow the whistle. That'll be Seton Hall ball, but they let Big that one go a little East bit longer. Basketball. <laughs> The commissioner walked by Val Ackerman and said hello to us at halftime. And you you look at this, and this is the definition of Big East basketball. Guys diving on the floor, officials letting it go until the last possible moment. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. Four, Four seconds. Lob to the middle. Lob to the middle. Four to shoot. Davis is out of the lob. Catches it down low and gets the finish. Great execution. That's what wins games. Kolek step through. Jones in the corner. It's Mitchell. No good. Bediaco the board. Richmond up ahead. Oh! The Pirates are pillaging. 8-0 run. Kolek the three, still called down the floor. They lose Davis. Davis the hammer. And Seton Hall has opened it up. Ten point lead, 225 left. Pirates looking for the upset. This winter. 2021-22, you see the work there. Right now, trying to improve the three and one in Big East play. All three of those wins over top 25 opponents. Jones cut off. Igadaro, another nice two point bucket in the middle of the key. Cuts it to eight. I'm thinking about college basketball and the conferences, and we've got all kind of realignment and all kind of things going on. But I'll tell you what, the Big East basketball conference is something, man. Holy cow. Seton Hall was not picked near the top, I can guarantee you that. And Iwusu throws it away to nobody. Chasing for it is Joplin. Joplin between two. Gets the tough lane. It's a six-point game with 140 left. Did you see Richmond pat his, his jersey saying that was his fault? He can be a little casual at times, and then you don't want casual at this point in the game. 
And another turnover. Marquette forces it. They can cut this game to a two-possession game. Jones in the corner of the three. Knocks it down. And Seton Hall only leads by three. Yikes. A 7-0 run by Marquette in the last minute. And Dawes will call timeout, and all of a sudden, Bob, the pressure has completely shifted. Seton Hall now just trying to hang on with a minute down, plus 12 over Creighton. Today, plus 20. They've scored 30 points off of turnovers, including that last three. Good timeout by Shaheen. Run the clock, get the ball in this guy's hands. He's good in traffic. Cutting is Davis. That's going to be a deflection off the knee of Jones. Seton Hall ball with 10 seconds to shoot. Seton Hall executed with four seconds to go and got a layup on the weak side. And they're going to right review here. this. That's off the knee of Davis. That looks off the knee of Davis if you take one more closer look. The officials will review this at the monitor. Critical call here, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Ten to shoot for Seton Hall. Cutting and a turnover. Jones gets it. Kicks it up ahead to Jones. Kolek dishes it back. Higadaro, the floater. He is money. We've got a one-point game. What teamwork there. Jones could have shot it twice and didn't. Seton Hall with a season-high 22 turnovers. And it's a 9-0 Marquette run. Nine-second differential between shot and game clock. Dawes has been absent from the offense for quite a while. Richmond to the corner. Davis, four to shoot. Two to shoot. Davis spinning. Puts it up. Finds the angle. Seton Hall leads by three. Timeout called by Marquette as Kolek races Woo! it down the floor with 5.4 seconds left. That was a tough make on that shot. Joplin, Jones, and Igadaro. Look, look for left corner. Look for left corner. Igadaro has to catch it, but throws it off the hands of Joplin. And an unforced turnover by Marquette with 4.3 left. They were going to throw it to Igadala high. And then have him relay it across the, the court. But Joplin was running one way and he was throwing it the other way. An untimely miscue by Marquette. It was already tough enough to get the ball in bounds, Igadaro. So Seton Hall will call a 30 second timeout. And we'll step aside for a moment as they get to the X's and O's. They have four seconds to go down and try to score, which is unlikely. Richmond to inbound at a Wusu Price free. Gets a couple of dribbles until finally fouled by Kolick. And so I like that. Notice how they throw it through it towards their end. If they throw it the other way, it gets knocked loose. Guy goes in for a layup and it changes everything. Marquette, no timeouts remaining. At a Wusu heading to the line, shooting just under 66% on the year. Seton Hall 14 of 15 from the line here this afternoon. And a huge one and one coming up. How does Seton Hall play a miss here, potentially? <laughs> Rolls it out. Under two. It's going to be a heave. Kolek has to put it up to tie it. No good. Seton Hall hangs on. And they pick up their third win over a ranked opponent in the...